And so I would suggest perhaps uh, have a small committee or a group that will keep in touch and meet as often as necessary and follow up with action. And thank you so much for lending me your ears. Thank you, Ambassador Fabio. This has been a very interesting uh, uh, beginning session, and uh, I am really sure that we're going to be in for a really liberating conversation. Uh, our first session is legal dimension of implementing proceedings against genocide. Uh, while Ambassador Fabio talked about uh, the refugee issue in context of India, but for this particular session, I would like to go back, take a step back, and go back to the root of the problem, which is Myanmar. Uh, so, as far as we know, at this point, over 600,000 or maybe more people, uh, Rohingya, have fled Myanmar. Uh, time and again, various UN bodies have spoken about how uh, Rohingyas are being persecuted in Myanmar. It is the most persecuted, uh, persecuted population in the world. They are stateless. Uh, in the last speech of uh, the UN High Commissioner, Zahid Ragalhosen, he spoke about the crimes against humanity which has been taking place in Myanmar. Uh, he called it the textbook case of ethnic cleansing. And while he was making his speech, he asked, can anyone rule out the element of genocide? So, I would like to begin the conversation from his question and I would ask, uh, I'd request Heba to answer this question that can anyone rule out the element of genocide in Myanmar which is happening at this point? Um, thank you, Suti. On the 13th of March this year, there was a statement by the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights uh, in Myanmar and she said that, um, well, the situation in Myanmar has the hallmarks of a genocide. Not, not, many, have, not many international observers have used this word genocide. I think it's, it's become in vogue, it's coming into vogue with reference to Myanmar only very recently, even though the crisis in Myanmar has a long history. There were deportations and there were um, genocidal attacks on the Rohingyas in the 1970s, in the 1990s, and this crisis goes back into the 1940s. Now, I, having said that, I'll um, immediately come to the legal proceedings to uh, what the legal dimensions be regarding the whole um, the entire genocide of Rohingyas. So, on the 9th of April 2018, this is this is a very recent development. This is this was something quite unique in the international uh, in the ICC in the International Criminal Court that the special prosecutor there, her name is uh, Ms. Bensuda. She made an appeal to the ICC that there should be a ruling under Article 93 of the Rome Statute of the ICC about whether the ICC can exercise jurisdiction under Article 12, Section 2A of the Rome Statute so that the international crisis of the deportation of Rohingyas from Myanmar to Bangladesh can be investigated. Now, as uh, as we said in the beginning of this um, of this conference, that the Rohingya, that, as was shown in the audiovisual presentation, also that the Rohingya is a stateless people. Now, in order to bring an element of indictment to the state, which has reduced Rohingyas to statelessness, which has reduced them to be an exterminable minority, the international community will have to take action. And I think. Uh, the prosecutors uh, appeal to the ICC that it should, you know, consider its own jurisdiction about whether it can take cognizance of the fact that there have been deportations. That is, I think, an initiation of these proceedings of what the international community can do to um, recognize this fact that deportation has happened. The limitation over here is that, as the prosecutor herself has noticed, that there is rather an ambiguity in the Rome Statute of the ICC. So, 
What does an international migration and uh, crisis look like? There has been deportation, yes, but does this crime also include genocide? So because of the intricacies of international law, what is now being discussed in the ICC is the deportation of 700,000 Rohingya refugees from Myanmar to Bangladesh. But this is not preceded by an acknowledgement that genocide has actually led to this deportation. And just after the prosecutor made this statement, Myanmar took strong offense to that and they said that they will refuse, uh, that they take strong exception to the fact that the International Criminal Court has taken upon its jurisprudence to investigate about whether the regime has been responsible for the deportation of Rohingyas to uh, Bangladesh. Should I stop here or should I? I think uh, let's keep the conversation moving. Uh, taking from what you said about jurisdiction and uh, you know the definition of genocide, uh, genocide uh, convention on uh, prevention and uh, uh, punishment of genocide is one of the uh, first conventions which UN started working on and uh, it's been there since 1951. Uh, Article 2 of the uh, Convention on Genocide talks about what are the elements which are required for uh, any state to, or for that, for that matter, international community or UN bodies to say that this is a place where genocide is happening. Uh, I would request Memu Pracha to shed some light on whether the case, whatever is happening in uh, Myanmar, uh, UN treaty bodies have been speaking about it being ethnic cleansing, a lot of international organizations have said ethnic cleansing, but the word genocide hasn't been used. So tell us if the elements uh, which are present in the definition, they do fall under the category of genocide and if yes, a follow up question to you as well, what does it mean for Myanmar and how within the jurisdiction of Myanmar, domestic laws and international laws will uh, come into play? Thank you very much, Smithy. First of all, I congratulate the organizers of this excellent program for choosing the day that is today.